sailors love and fear the Big Blue. To them, it's a place full of life and death. They look at it in awe and with mistrust and they have their reasons. The ocean's boundless expanse of water hides the destinies of many seafarers who disappeared without a trace, becoming another of the Big Blue's mysteries. It is there, in the deepest depths of the ocean, that the first plants and the first primitive animal life emerged. The sea was life's first home. That is why it seems only logical to imagine that the seas and oceans are home to the most diverse beings, the most abundant life forms, and the most varied ecosystems. And to a great extent, they are. There is room for everything within the ocean. is the ocean's overall plenty. However, there is one marine ecosystem that is quite simply boundless. It's the Big Blue, the open sea, the planet's great mass of water, a place with no points of reference and nothing but water and sky on the horizon. Our oceans have an average depth of 4,000 meters and they cover 71% of the Earth's surface area. In all, 97% of all the water on our planet is to be found in the ocean. The ocean hosts an enormous quantity and diversity of life forms. But despite this lavish bounty, much of its surface, as well as a great part of its depths, is a veritable desert. The open sea is the world's largest, least populated, and most solitary ecosystem. 
and it is also one of the least well-known. Biologists refer to the Big Blue as the pelagic ecosystem. The animals that live in it are forever traveling or adrift. Far away from the continents, their world is nothing but water. Some of the planet's greatest travelers are found among the fauna of the pelagic ecosystem. The oceans hide invisible trails that whales have blazed throughout the centuries. Many species of whales spend their lives traveling. These southern white whales, for instance, live in Patagonia a few months out of the year. In the summertime, the whales head for the cold seas of the poles looking for food. But they'll swim thousands of kilometers to mate and breed in warmer water. Half their lives are spent traveling across this liquid void. Sea turtles have been plying the oceans a lot longer. They began crossing the seas nearly 200 million years ago, and their journey still continues. These chelonia only go near dry land in order to bury their eggs. They spend the rest of their time swimming across thousands upon thousands of miles of water. Turtles tend to take advantage of the ocean current to help them swim, and migrations are an important part of their life cycle. Every turtle population has its own migratory route to travel between its feeding sites and breeding grounds. Turtles can take several years to migrate, and they cover enormous distances on their travels. The hawksbill turtle tends to favor all things tropical, since it usually looks for food by the coral reefs that grow only in the planet's warmer seas. As a result, it travels far less than other turtle species. Even so, satellite tracking has revealed that the hawksbill quite often explores hundreds of kilometers in order to search for food all over the ocean. The sea is constantly stirring with waves, tides, currents, and storms. Marine organisms have to keep moving in order to survive. Some float adrift at the mercy of waves and currents. Others actively swim across great distances. And still others spend their days diving into the depths and coming back up to the surface. All of them are joined by a series of relationships that intermingle in the sea's tumultuous water. Jellyfish, for instance, are an important source of food for certain species of turtle. These ethereal beings are extremely ancient. Jellyfish fossils have been found dating back 300 million years, and essentially, 
They have not changed in all that time. True, they are rather primitive, but at the same time, they're also models for success. They're simple and efficient, and their bodies are 98% water. Marine plankton is at the base of the ocean's entire chain of life. Microscopic plants and animals form a broth that gently sways to and fro with the waves and is pushed along by the ocean's currents. Some of the largest creatures in the ocean, and possibly on the planet, feed off the diminutive organisms of the plankton. The manta ray is a close relative of the shark. Manta rays can sometimes measure over eight meters in wingspan and weigh close to a ton and a half. What's more, they have one of the largest brains of any species of fish. These enormous fish look like they're flying in the boundless ocean. They generally live in the planet's warmer waters. Despite their large size, their diet is based on plankton and small fish that they often catch while swimming close to the ocean surface. They keep their mouths, which are on the tip of their bodies and flanked on either side by a horn-like lobe, wide open. Their anatomy is efficiently adapted to allow them to float and move with little effort. Living in the open sea has its advantages and disadvantages. It's important not to sink here, and this means figuring out a way to float and move with the currents. Those unable to face this challenge will end up in the cold and dark abyssal zone. Many animals will never touch the seabed, and those that dive too far into the depths can easily end up being eaten by an abyssal hunter. There are over 350 species of sharks, and some have bodies that are perfectly adapted to conditions in the pelagic system. Thanks to their hydrodynamic shape, they're perfect swimmers that move easily and quickly, expending very little energy. With their strange flattened head and eyes located on either side, 
hammerhead sharks have a wildly extravagant shape. Biologists, however, consider it a marvelous adaptation to life in the depths of the Big Blue Sea. On the one hand, when it moves its head from side to side, its strategically placed eyes provide it with a wide, ample view of its surroundings. On the other hand, the flattened shape of its head and its pectoral fins allow it to control movements underwater, giving the hammerhead great stability and good aim when hunting. Hammerheads are the most gregarious shark species that we know of, although it's still a mystery why they tend to gather in groups that number hundreds of individuals. Although it's thought this may have something to do with their migratory and reproductive habits. Most marine life exists at depths of less than 200 meters and is concentrated either close to the coastline or near the continental shelf. Islands located in the middle of the ocean are very appealing to a wide variety of marine animals. These islands combine the advantages of being near the coast with those of living in the Big Blue. Longfin pilot whales are frequent visitors to these places. Their name in Spanish, calderón or cauldron, refers to the cauldron-like shape of their heads, created by their bulging foreheads. The name pilot whale makes reference to the belief that one of the whales acts as a guide or a pilot for the rest of the herd. The fact is, they tend to form rather large groups with strong family ties. Despite their misleading name, these are not whales at all. They are actually large dolphins. At rest, they swim near the surface in open and relaxed formations in which mothers and their brood always travel together, since the young are suckled during the first two years of their lives. They feed on fish and squid that they hunt by quickly diving over half a kilometer into the depths. In order to hunt, these dolphins first gather into compact groups before diving into the water to explore the abyssal zones. Great schools of fish are often found in the nutrient-rich open sea and also in the pelagic zones closer to the coastline. These massive crowds composed of a single species are a common occurrence. 
Small fish such as anchovies and sardines gather in groups of tens of thousands, forming schools that crisscross the ocean in search of plankton. Larger species such as the horse mackerel, whose diet is mainly predatory, also form schools during the day when they are at their most vulnerable. A single fish on its own is easy prey to locate and capture. But a school made up of thousands of individuals moving around simultaneously confuses the would-be attacker and thus increases the possibility of survival. Fish that swim in this type of formation are able to very quickly synchronize their movements and perform extremely complicated distraction maneuvers that leave predators bewildered. Their survival depends on this. Hunters and prey are just part of the ocean's daily drama. But the boundless ocean still holds many other surprises in store. Even today, after centuries of expeditions and research, the Big Blue is the least known place on the planet. The scientific community estimates it would require between three and ten centuries of intensive work to take an inventory of all marine species. Until then, the heart of the ocean will continue to keep many of its secrets a secret.